I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I dye a lot of yarn using a lot of different techniques and very frequently we have leftover dyes mixed with citric acid. This one is a little more solid. I think that one of these is pecan brown, one of these is electric violet. Uh, these dyes I probably use for one of the Chemnitz Chemnitzchenica videos, the one where I was doing very light speckles and so I have a lot left over. And then these are from a mystery surprise live stream, which, okay. I was like, oh, are they all sort of solid on the bottom? Yeah. It seems like the powder's stuck there, but with a little tap, we've got them shakable again. Um, all of these colors are fairly rainbow. However, they were all mixed with three, not quite primary colors, but three colors. A combination of cayenne, alpine blue, and sunflower yellow. Uh, and I guess these came from a mystery surprise live stream. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like that that was like, oh no, maybe this was in the summer. Maybe this was like July, uh, July 2023. But still, I've had these around for a while and today we're gonna try to use them up doing some immersion speckling, which I'm gonna try to not have the purple and brown dominate, but I might decide I wanna use all this up. So we're gonna see what the colors do and just have some fun and leave no dye behind. I have 200 grams of yarn that I pre-soaked overnight. In here, in just plain tap water, no additional acid, I have, I think, one skein of Knit Pick Stroll fingering weight yarn, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and one skein of Swish DK yarn, which is 100% Superwash Merino wool. And so this is the yarn that will be dying today with all of these leftover speckles that we have. I keep saying all, maybe not all, but a lot. <laughs> We're going for a lot here. <laughs> and I suppose I didn't mention what makes these colors interesting. I mentioned that we mixed a yellow, a blue, and a red together, but some of them have just the main color and others have a blend. So we have a red and a color that's more orange because I mixed that red and yellow together with the citric acid. And while some of these colors do give us still breaking where we can see them separate into the individual colors, I think especially with that purple blend, which I think we probably have the least of, I don't really know. But we really have six different hues here just because we mix things together. Uh, before mixing it with the citric acid powder back in that live stream. If you want to learn more about any of the tools or equipment I use in my dyeing videos, I do have links, why is this stuck? Links and affiliate links down in the video description, in particular to Amazon and Knit Picks. And all affili affiliate links are clearly marked and I may earn a commission if you make a purchase through those links. Now the nice thing that about dyeing 200 grams of yarn here today is that I can spread it out more. And since I don't have a lot of some of the colors, that can work reasonably well. I don't care about getting the sharpest speckles today. I care more about just having fun and playing with these colors. Even if we end up with something that is mostly brown or purple. <laughs> so. I've gone ahead and added, I guess, seven cups of water here, which is maybe a little more than I think I was originally intending, but that's not really a bad thing. And then let's go ahead and do one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar. This is a lot more acid than I might typically start with, but I don't really mind uh, we're sort of going by the seat of our pants today. <laughs> uh, we will see some spread, but we also have citric acid mixed in with those acid dyes already. So that will further reduce the pH as we go on. And the nice thing about having this much water in here is if I forget <laughs> while waiting for this to heat up and it takes me longer to come back, uh, then the water level won't get that low. So win-win. But anyway, I'll see you once things are hot. I could hear the bubbles from the other room, but I just had to wait and I just reduced the heat and I'm gonna put on my Deluxe River respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. I'm changing my plan only slightly. And that's to just give myself a little bit of the brown and the purple before moving into the other colors. Yeah, this is electric violet. This way I know which one is which. 
go a little more brown up there. Maybe I should go for more brown than purple in this one so it doesn't become completely overloaded. Let's see where we are. I think this is our blue. Oh, right. Some of this also had like chunky citric acid in it, which was not my favorite. Okay, this one has very little color overall. So it's pretty much going to only be on this side. Which color are you? I can't tell what you are. Maybe red? Come on, get those. This is why I'm not a fan of the chunky citric acid. Okay, there's a tiny bit left. The chunkier citric acid doesn't really bind to the powders as well. And so you get a mix of these like really big chunky speckles and then some fine powder that is also in the containers. This one is an orange, which will bring in some red vibes. Oh, am I not gonna be using these up? I'm using up these small ones. I am determined. Okay, here's some green. So the positive of the chunkier citric acid is Huh, I need to do a chunky versus fine citric acid video. It's really easy to spread things out, especially with these little shakers. But wait, I thought that maybe that other color was like the purple or something. Because now I'm feeling like this guy is orange. Yeah, this one is the orange. I think cayenne is such an orangey red. <laughs> but that is hard. Okay, and here's the yellow. The one that was almost gone must have been the purple, which thankfully we have some purple. All right, we got a little bit of everything in here. And I'm now gonna come in and grab more brown. And so this brown is with the finer milled citric acid. And I do ultimately think I prefer it, but there is something to be said about those nice chunky speckles. And so I don't think I've done a specific video with the fine versus thick milled colors yet, but clearly that needs to happen. But anyway, so far so good, and clearly we're going to end up with a lot of purple left over and probably a lot of the brown left over still, but my plan now is to wait approximately five minutes, and then we can flip and continue adding dye. Oh my gosh, but just look at all these colors. Oh, I love it. All right, let's flip the yarn. And as I lift it, because of the way the yarn is scrunched, do you see how it's not sort of like evenly heavy speckled across, how there are sections of lighter color? But it does look like these colors are striking pretty quickly. We will have a pastel base in the end. It's not going to feel white, I don't think, so there's a little bit of spread. But... Not bad. I just have a feeling we're going to need a hand, good handful of flips. So let's get to it. I really love going for a super heavy speckled colorway. This type of colorway is a lot harder to do when you have more yarn in a pan because the more skeins you have, the less is available up at the surface and the speckles don't really go through multiple layers of yarn. Sometimes they even stay on just one side of a strand of yarn. So then you'll have to do even more flips to get a good coverage. Honestly, if I wanted like incredibly heavy speckles all over without larger pastel spots, then you might even want to do one at a time. I don't know. But either way, this is a fun celebratory yarn and I really like where it is going. And I like that I'm going to have these containers back for another project. These itty bitty shakers, which I will have an affiliate link to them down in the video description, work so, so well. They can't hold that much dye in them, but the size is good for handling them and getting a reasonable spread of the color on yarn. They don't tend to dump things too fast in one place. And that is something that I really, 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 really like. I tried to wait around five minutes or so before flipping the yarn just to give the speckles time to sort of dissolve and set in place before moving the yarn. But I also wasn't concerned about some spread or that things may end up feeling brown overall from combining all these colors because I am adding a lot of brown to it to begin with to give sort of like an earthiness rainbow. But again, we'll see where things take us as we continue dyeing this yarn. 
When I was satisfied with the amount of color coverage that we had, I waited 30 minutes from the last time I added dye to let all the colors set completely. It's been 30 minutes. I'm gonna turn off the heat and let's zoom in a little bit. I would say the background color of this yarn is sort of a tan at this point. There are some areas that are slightly more pink, uh, but overall it has a very tan vibe. I am happy though that it does not only feel uh, brown and purple. <laughs> but now that those 30 minutes are up, I am going to remove the yarn and set it aside to cool completely so we can wash it. We're gonna wash our yarn now. Popping it in. I'm not expecting to have any color bleeding. I did add a lot of water at the very end of our dyeing. Like after I added dye, I waited five minutes and I added a bunch of water to it. I like to do that when I'm dyeing with dry powders because that way, if there's some powder that's undissolved at the surface, that gives it a chance to dissolve. And I would say that's the reason why this washing step is the most important on yarn that you've dyed with dry dye powder. I mean, it's important to rinse it anyway. Uh, you don't want to keep the yarn at a low pH for a long period of time. But anyway, we're not seeing any bleeding. I had added a little dish soap and we're gonna just rinse that out now. And then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can take a closer look at the finished dried yarn. Here is our heavy speckled yarn with the stroll on the bottom and the Swish DK on the top. And heavy speckles, wow! <laughs> I suppose it could always be heavier, but we've got lots of speckles spread throughout the whole thing with lots and lots of colors. There are some areas where the color spread a little bit more, so you have more of a defined color section. And here's another one with the purple. I feel like that there's potentially some others throughout, uh, but I don't know, the, the yarn is surprisingly neutral overall, maybe because of the brown, maybe because of the combination of all the colors, but on closer inspection, it's a party. I think that this yarn is amazing and we got really good coverage. The downside to this colorway is that uh, the amount of footage for the time lapse I filmed, I think was around 30 minutes. So not counting waiting five minutes in between flips, I spent 30 minutes actively flipping and applying color onto just 200 grams of yarn. And so that isn't exactly the most sustainable thing. Of course, one big time sink was that I was near the end of some of the shakers, and so I was having to try to pry those lids off and things like that. So I think if I was using even my bigger shakers or I had these shakers with uh, not as thick citric acid, then you could probably process a lot more pans at once and more skeins at once. But as far as speckles go, this is a technique that takes a longer period of time. I am curious what would have happened if I didn't wait very long with these particular colors. Some colors, if I add the speckles and then move it right away, then you don't really see the speckles well, but other colors that works very, very well. So that just depends. And I'm not complaining about how long this took because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not worth it. It's totally worth it. I love the yarn. It's just when it comes to scalability, it would take longer and uh, it would be hard for me to dye like 50 skeins in this kind of colorway, not just because of the leave no dye behind, but just because of the amount of time it takes to set everything up and add the color without even then waiting uh, for the colors to finish setting. So those are things that I try to keep in mind. But I think that if I was going to do this and I wanted heavy speckles all over, a countertop base technique would actually be a good fit uh, for this type of colorway because I would be able to move things more without bleeding in between. So huh, maybe I'll need to do like heavy speckled yarn countertop versus immersion because you can certainly achieve a heavy speckled result either way. It's just 
I wonder how long each one would take and then what the results would be like. I'll have to think this through because as far as an experiment goes, it's not the best side by side comparison, but I don't know, the wheels are turning and I'm feeling inspired. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video and go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop to buy some yarn that's been featured in one of my videos. and. It's just another really awesome way to help support the content here. You can find the links down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.